Welcome back to Lost in Laos and today we're in a very special place. I cannot wait for you to see this. So many adventures, such a great place. Let me explain some more. This beautiful place behind me is Vang Vieng and it's one of the most popular places in the whole of Laos for many reasons. Obviously the main one is, look at it, it's incredibly beautiful. The second one is there's lots to see and do here. There's lots of activities, adrenaline junky stuff and adventures to be had. And so I thought I'd show you guys what Van Vieng is like. So we're gonna jump on Zelda. We're gonna travel around the area of Van Vieng, the town itself. We'll fly up in the sky. We'll go in dark, scary caves. We'll climb viewpoints. We'll go to the lagoons. We'll do all of the things that Van Vieng is famous for. Enjoy the video and welcome to the next episode of Lost in Lao. Claustrophobic, I don't like it. So I'm not going to be able to cover everything that you can do in this town because there's just so many things. But the best way to start your day, I think, value for money, bang for your buck and such a relaxing and beautiful thing to do, is to go paragliding. I'm excited to go on this thing. But yeah, yeah. They, they didn't pick me up for 45 minutes, I was waiting outside my hotel room, which was fun. But eventually I got picked up. So here we are. Let's go. <laughs> Jaggedy the rocks are below us. Wow, 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 wow. Look at that. Unbelievable scenes. It's like a lost jungle down there. These limestone cliffs are kind of entrapping a lot of that jungle. Down there, I can see structures on the top of this steep mountain and I think that's one of the one of the viewpoints and also actually I'm just seeing now in the distance on that ridge there's another one I'm thinking later in the video we should or maybe in the afternoon we should go up there but I've got lots of plans for us in the rest of this video to explore this whole area of Vang Vieng it's the adventure capital of Laos and you can you can see why can't you just below, in between my feet. Can you see that? That's one of the viewpoints. And over there on that ridge, there's another one. This is certainly the highlight of the flight so far, coming up to this humongous cliff. Look at that. As we come close to the cliff, can really start to feel the air turbulence. We're starting to move a lot more. It's kind of scary. <laughs> there are two options for flying in Van Vieng. There's the paragliding, where we have the engine behind us, and uh, we just glide through the air in the morning sun. Or there is the hot air balloons. There are four balloons that go up every morning, every afternoon. And it's the same price to do this and the hot air balloon. But when you do this, it's just you, you and your thoughts. And it's a bit more exciting than a hot air balloon. Hot air balloons go up and then they go down, don't they? So here we feel like we're an eagle soaring across the jungle. One of the early morning viewpoints, there seems to be some people on there. Yes, I can see someone next to the flag. Wow, 
look at this, and there's a buggy there. Let's wave. Hello! Hello, mister! What a feeling! And now it looks like we're headed back towards the sun, back towards Vang Bieng itself, which is in the distance. I think it's a 20 minute flight. So, it's a great way to start your day in Vang Bieng, isn't it? <laughs> hotels in the area. I'm not staying there but it has a nice pool and, and incredible views so check it out. I'm just staying in a cheap guest house somewhere down here. As we fly across the high street and the markets below what a feeling this is. Wow. Here we come. We're coming into land which means we have to lose some altitude and we get to do these cool turns. I love seeing the shadow on the floor as we come over. If you're coming to Van Bieng or to Laos or even to Southeast Asia in general, then you're going to need a VPN. Now the one that I use is called NordVPN and just because you've clicked on this video, you are going to be getting a fantastic deal. So we all know what a VPN is nowadays, don't we? A virtual private network and it protects us online. It enables us to get cheaper flights. It enables us to get a wider library of Netflix and have a much more pleasurable, safe and enjoyable experience online when we're out traveling around the world. Unfortunately, there are so many common cyber security threats that we have to put up with when we're traveling with our laptops and our phones, when we're connecting to random Wi-Fi's, we're just kind of in the dark unless you have a VPN and NordVPN is amazing at protecting you against these common security threats. There's the man in the middle attack where someone sets up a fake Wi-Fi signal. Once you connect, they can get access to your laptop and all of your security information. And so if you're in a cafe or in a restaurant or something and you connect to that Wi-Fi, they have access to some of your secure information information very scary there's phishing which ph phishing which is when people set up mimic banks mimic social media accounts and even pretend to be certain people online it even happens in my comment section people pretending to be me and they're sending you links and it's just super dangerous super annoying and i do try my best to get rid of all of that stuff as soon as possible but some of it still seeps through so if you just have a vpn you're going to be secure against any of that harmful attack Head to NordVPN forward slash Paddy Doyle and you'll be able to find out just how good the deal that they're giving you is going to be. Thank you to NordVPN for keeping me on the road and let's get back out and enjoy some more of Van Vieng. So, an incredible experience paragliding in the morning or you might want to do the hot air balloon, it's up to you. But then once you've had breakfast, keep attacking Van Vieng, there's so much to see and do and I would recommend going to a cave. Now there's quite a few different caves to choose from. I chose the wet cave. It was a completely mad experience. Let me share with you what happened. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. 
there we go. Wow, this place is beautiful, guys. There's also a zip lining course all around this jungle area, which looks beautiful as well. So maybe we'll do the zip line later, I'm not sure. Are we going in there? That is crazy. What do I look like right now? Okay, into a cave we go. No tour guide, no instructions. Just freezing cold water and a Bob the Builder hat and a life jacket. I really don't know what the hell is going on here, but <laughs> looks like we're going in here. Okay, mind your head. Oh. Oh my God, do we go down here? I mean, literally, I've had no guide, <laughs> no information, <laughs> but uh, follow the rope, I suppose, and pray that there's not an earthquake. Oh, look at the fish. Hello, fish. I think we go this way. Oh. <laughs> what the hell am I doing with my life? I'm stuck on this rope. So all I can see is the roof and... Oh, it's scary. I don't like it, it's too dark. And nobody here. I have to put you away because I have to use both my arms. And it is so tiring. I've been going like this for like five minutes. Into the, I mean, I'm going down into the gates of hell. What is this place? Oh, it seems like there's a river down there. But it's way too claustrophobic for me. I mean, the roof is literally above my head. Oh, look at that scary hole. Oh, scary, 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 scary. Scary hole. Is this the tour? You just pull yourself through darkness or is there some sort of reveal? I should have looked up what this place is. I saw some cool pictures on Instagram or whatever of people having fun. This isn't fun. Why did I come here? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go a little bit further. Right, I've been pulling myself in the darkness for 15 minutes and I've had enough. I've had enough. This is, I'm claustrophobic. I don't like it. <laughs> okay, I'm back on dry land. I just want to show you something that I've just noticed. There's a map, caving tubing map, and here it tells you where to go or what to do, basically. I should have seen this before I went in, or maybe someone should have shown me, but never mind. But the good news is it wasn't like I missed out on too much because we obviously came through here. We pulled ourselves along. This would be where the river was flowing. Apparently, according to the map, you can go in there and there's some rock formations to look at. But it was like, it was probably like one foot between the water level and the, the cave roof. Maybe because it's been raining, I don't know. But uh, I wasn't up for that. It was way too claustrophobic. And then we carried on a little bit longer. And I think I probably got to here because I just remember the, there was like the roof came down and then, and then all you do is you get to the end and then you turn around and you come back. So there wasn't like a reveal because I was too scared to keep going. I got to around about here and I gave up. So thankfully I didn't miss out too much. It says the highlight is you reach the cool and clean and very dark and quiet place. <laughs> so yeah, cool, dark, quiet an extremely scary place if you're on your own. That would be so much fun with a group of backpackers and a tour guide who's like, he kind of knows his stuff and makes you feel like you're doing something legit and safe. But um, yeah, come and do this if you dare. <laughs> so yeah, I left the wet cave and uh, fun experience. I think obviously better with friends. 
And you know, I was just around the corner on the river there, just trying to get some shots of the beautiful area that the cave was in. And uh, I had a really cool little uh, interaction with some local kids who were swimming by the river. Beautiful, very loud. I've been approached by some locals. Hello, kiddies. Um, they're all swimming here, so I was like, oh, I can get a nice shot of the bridge. And look how crystal clear the water is. And it looks like there's some fishermen over there. This is a beautiful part of the world, guys. Right, do you want to see the drone go up? Yeah? Okay. Yes. Hello. Hello. Hey, hey, you need to have fun. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, imagine being eight years old and this is where you hang out on a Saturday. Careful. <laughs> and then, Van Vieng is also famous for having these crystal clear blue lagoons, freshwater cave pools where you can go and raft or relax and do jumps and you know just have a few beers or whatever you want to do relax now i did have a look online and the one that had the best reviews was number three lagoon number three but it was pretty far away but the drive was incredible excuse me these beautiful buffaloes. I haven't seen them this colour before. Hello. You kind of look like Labradors. <laughs> Just the Lao version. Oh, they're all squeaky clean. Gorgeous animals, aren't they? All right, we have arrived. You can see all of these cool buggies that have made it. So the only thing that you can see is, is beautiful, don't get me wrong, but at this time of day, three o'clock, the sun's gone behind there, look. So it's not really in the sun. So it's not popping in terms of the color. Hey mate. Hello buddy, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Nice to see you, yeah. Yeah, not too bad. How's your day going? Pretty chill. I went to the water cave thing. Sure. Is that the one, have you, have you been to that one where you pull yourself with the rope? Is that the one you went to? No, no, no. And it's pretty cool. <laughs> but is it? Yeah, it's like about 20 kilometers north of Van Vieng. I don't know even where It's called the now. water cave. Pretty gnarly, but I was there by myself, so I was fucking terrified. I don't really feel like swimming. I just came down here to have a look. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Um, did you been to any other ones? No. I heard that this was the best one. For me, at this point, I kind of just thought like, okay, maybe I went to the wrong lagoon. Maybe the reviews weren't correct. Because to me, it wasn't in the sun. And I don't know, it just wasn't as spectacular as I was expecting it to be. Still a nice place. Um, probably somewhere you would go with a bunch of people from the hostel and take some food, um, take some activities, beers, whatever, and uh, just chill for the day. But me being me and I was driving there on my motorbike, I enjoyed the ride there way more than the actual destination, which sometimes happens. So I just turned around and I came back into town. <laughs> the traffic in Vang Vieng is just a joke. <laughs> Isn't Lao, isn't Vang Vieng, I should say, and Lao, <laughs> isn't it just stunning? And 
then on my way back into town, I wanted to go climb one of the many viewpoints. I thought there was one, but there isn't one. There's about five or six, and they all have kind of copied each other. Every little mountain has a motorbike on the top, and so you might see a specific bike on a specific mountain and think that's the one that you're at, but you might not be. Um, don't ask me which one's which because Google Maps is not much help in Vang Vieng, to be honest. So um, this is just the trail and let me share with you the climb, the views and uh, the incredible sunset. Um, it says 30 to 40 minutes to reach the viewpoint, 10,000 kip to get in. And we're going up the jungle. It looks steep, guys. <laughs> because I can already tell this is going to be crazy steep and the views look incredible and I don't want to waste battery or energy let me just cut to the top and I'll tell you how it was <laughs> made it uh, 15 25 minutes <laughs> it was like this I have a motorbike at the top and then this is the view sunset and we're just laughing because one of the hot air balloons is really high up in the sky it looks amazing the other one looks like it's gonna crash in that field I don't know if you can see him put this one on the list this is a good one so yeah that kind of sums up my experience um, a full day in Vang Vieng I've been here for four days I had to catch up on a little bit of work and uh, rest a little bit and then I had a full action-packed day yesterday and did all of this amazing stuff but um, yeah look I know a lot of you are like well, what about the tubing so just quickly if you don't know tubing was what put this place on the map about 15 years ago and backpackers would come here in their hundreds and go get a plastic tube go upstream and tube down the river drinking having parties swinging sliding doing all kinds of crazy stuff and I did it I did it years and years and years ago and um, it was it was a wild experience but because it got shut down um, a lot of people actually sadly got really injured and lost their lives and then I think an Australian minister's son died and that was it it got called and they just they just stopped it um, for a few years but it has come back even after COVID but now and I've been speaking to the backpackers here um, on a clear sunny day like today you'll expect around 50 to 60 backpackers doing the tubing um, but if it's overcast it's much less than that because people like to be out in the sun and only four bars can open at once at the minute so and the reason why I didn't do it this time is because I'm off the drink I'm not trying to have any beer for 30 days so I didn't really see much point going tubing and just being a, around a bunch of backpackers who are all getting drunk having a great time don't get me wrong and then there'd be me in the corner with my GoPro not drinking I think I would just stand out and it would be a bit weird so I just decided that even though I've been tubing many times before 
way back when it was super popular. I don't really need to do it again now. I'm a bit too old for that now. <laughs> In the next video, I'll be driving further north towards Luang Prabang. So have a lovely day. Thanks for watching.